On this episode of The Bell Effect, we are joined once again by Association of Belltel Retirees Chairman Jack Cohen, who joined us to discuss this year's proxy season efforts, including two proxies which will appear on the ballot. If you are a Verizon shareholder, don't forget to vote. Here's Jack. And we're back with Association of Belltel Retirees Chairman Jack Cohen. Uh, and Jack, we're recording this at the end of April um, in 2020. You know, we're living in quarantine during a pandemic. And it's forced Verizon to kind of shift their plans for their uh, annual shareholders meeting from San Diego, which you were going to attend, now to virtual. Tell us a little bit about what you've heard about the, the process and where we are now. Well, I've actually heard very little. There is a little bit of conflicting information that I've been getting, and I won't know for sure, probably uh, until a few days before May 7th. First of all, why should association members actually take this seriously? That's a very good question, and I always draw the parallel with a lot of uh, moaning that's going on when people think, consider the disparity in compensation between the average person, the average employee, and the executives uh, of, of the organization. If you ever uh, opted to complain about that and you own shares of stock, do your complaining by voting. If you don't vote and you consider it, continue to complain, then you're just, you know, it's meaningless. And the results are going to be that the company will vote your shares the way they want to. Uh, tell us a little bit about the two proxies that are being presented by the association, the numbers and that whether people should support them or not. Item number eight and the item number four. But basically, they both deal with executive compensation. The, the, uh, the first, the item number four talks about non-qualified savings plan earnings for senior executives. Now, we're, we're not against compensation for, for senior executives, but when it, it, it gets excessive, it, it reaches uh, into this kind of a realm. You and I, as I'm talking to our members, we have, uh, we have a compensation plan that we used to participate in. And we usually had a limit of 6% of our annual, annual salary. And that, that was called a qualified plan. And of course, uh, it has tax implications, tax deductible implications. All right, if you, in the case of a Roth account, the withdrawals are normally uh, tax-free. However, this is a qualified plan. There are tax implications. And there are limitations, all right? Uh, from a, an executive perspective, they have more of, a, they have a, a larger access. They have access to something called a non-qualified plan. And a non-qualified plan has no limitations in terms of percentage of their annual salary. CEO McAdam, before he left, uh, these above market earnings, they call them above market earnings, came on top of his 325 grand in company matching contributions, all right, to the executive deferral plan. Uh, and then he's, and then he, he participates in the same plan that you and I are in, and he gets another 18 grand. We got ISS approval, that's the Institutional Shareholder Services which is a leading proxy advisory firm, they recommended in favor of this proxy proposal two years in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're, we're hoping that they continue to do it. But the key here is above market earnings. When it gets to the point where it's above market earnings, then we're saying that it's wrong and it should be regulated. And that's, that's one of our proxies. The other proxy, uh, which is, uh, what we call a golden parachute proxy, all right, what, what that, that essentially is, you end up with uh, a situation that circumvents our win back in 2003. We had, we went at work for five years to win a proposal, and we did in 2003, and essentially what it amounted to is to impose a limit 
of 2.99 times annual salary and short-term bonus for an executive who is terminated, whether he's terminated for cause because of a merger or whatever. It could not exceed 2.99 times his annual salary and bonus. What happened is that over the years, they figured a way of circumventing that by imposing something called uh, performance stock units and restricted stock units. And essentially that bypasses the limitations that were imposed by our win in 2003. And it amounts to the bulk of their compensation. Instead of bordering on three times the annual salary and, and, and short-term bonus, uh, the loophole extends that, saying is that when it gets to the point where it's far in excess of the 2.99 times annual salary and short-term bonus, then shareholders have got to participate in the, in, the, in the response. They've got to get your shareholder approval. So it's not asking for a lot, okay, but it's, it's, it's asking for the fairness that was circumvented after we won this case in 2003. Um, so just to sum it up, the two item numbers are, and they should be voting for them, correct? Yes, uh, they're voting for item num number four and also item number eight and also against the item number two, which, uh, which is the issue of, uh, of executive compensation. Okay, they, they, they are uh, voting against item, that's the advisory vote to approve executive compensation. So there's three things they gotta be concerned about. That they're voting against item number two, okay, and they're voting for items number four and eight. You know, I know that the association has had success in the past. Yes. Uh, sometimes it's been by vote and other times uh, by other means. Can, yeah. Just let people know that this vote isn't for nothing. Well, uh, we like we like to think, you know, first of all, let me say that it's to all shareholders' advantage that the company does well. We're, we're far from being excessively punitive with, with these efforts. We're interested in good corporate governance, as should all shareholders, because it's to our advantage if the company does well and we are part of the company, we own shares. Right. All right. Uh, it's, uh, we have a history, we've won actually three proposals, which is unheard of in the, in the history of what used to be AT&T and the Bell system. They never won any proposals. Well, we, we won three. And we've, allowed, we've been part of the change in corporate governance 11 times. And so we've, we're very proud of the success that we've had and the fact that we've helped establish good corporate governance and that's important to all members. So just to um, just to kind of wrap us up, um, I'll let you kind of have the last word uh, to let the, the members know anything that's on on your mind and, and on the minds of uh, those running the show at the association. Yes. Well, I, uh, I put our recommendations on several uh, Verizon retiree uh, Facebook pages, and uh, they've gotten uh, a, a lot of likes, and, and a few times they said, well, uh, I already voted when I first got the shares, it's, it's coming a little too late, and my answer to that is we have to find out from the company what item numbers we have and all of that, and if there's a, if there's a, a, a time element between when we, when we, we issued our recommendation and the time you received the, the uh, information from Verizon, I apologize for that. But uh, in, in future years, it, it would be a good idea because we're trying to get immediate access of our members to our recommendation as soon as, as, soon as these things come out. I, I have to end by saying that uh, it, it's up to the members. Okay, the members have to, if they're objecting to the disparity of compensation, this is a golden opportunity. This is their only opportunity, really, to give their say. And 
uh, and we need them to participate and vote. Jack, thank you so much for joining us. You know, continue to stay safe, be healthy, and, uh, you know, we'll definitely follow up with you. We have a new uh, ABTR newsletter coming out June 1st, so we'll have lots of updates for everybody about the association, about the proxy vote, um, and, and so much more. So we'll definitely talk to you again soon. Thank you. All right, Jack.